Hello, my name is Jack Butkoski, and I am Vice Chairman of the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, and I also have the distinct pleasure of being Chairman of the Connecticut Water Planning Council. I am here today to talk about an exciting time in the state of Connecticut, the development and implementation of a comprehensive water plan for the people of the state of Connecticut, the first of its kind in Connecticut's history. In this presentation, we will cover the background of why the State Water Plan was created, the statutory requirements for the plan, the planning process, and a little on what you'll find in the plan, its major recommendations, and a summary of the highlights, and finally, how to comment on the plan. The Connecticut Water Planning Council was created in 2001 under Public Act 01177 and operates under Connecticut State Statutes 25-330 to address issues involved with water companies, water resources, and state policies regarding the future of the state's drinking water supply. The members of the Water Planning Council are made up of leadership of four state agencies that have regulatory authority for water in our state, which are the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, the Office of Policy Management, and the Department of Public Health. The Water Planning Council began to develop the state water plan in 2015 as a result of a public act 14163. The intent of the plan is to help planners, regulators, and lawmakers in making decisions and managing Connecticut's water in a manner that is consistent throughout the state. Following public comment on public forums on the draft state water plan, the final draft state water plan will be submitted to the joint committees of the Connecticut legislature and the governor by January 1st of 2018. This is a historic moment. For the first time, a draft Connecticut water plan is available, and we'd really like feedback on this plan. The Water Planning Council has responsibility for delivering this plan to the legislature. The council consists of four agencies and oversees water management for Connecticut within the Department of Public Health, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, the Office of Policy Management, and the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. The Water Planning Council created a steering committee to guide development of the plan and policy and science and technological subcommittee to focus on those aspects, the existing, and we had the existing Water Planning Council Advisory Group also added their expertise to the development of the plan. Many people have contributed to this plan thus far. The working groups consisted of diverse stakeholders that included public water suppliers, environmental groups, industry, water users, watershed groups, regulators, public health officials, academics, and other interested citizens. They worked with our consultants from CDM Smith and Malone and McRoom to draft the water plan. The plan itself, along with summaries and information on how to comment, are all available at www.ct.gov forward slash water. This will be our link throughout the entire process. Historically, Connecticut has enjoyed a bountiful supply of water, fresh water, to meet the needs for households and businesses, agriculture and environment, energy and industry. Our focus as a state has been providing clean, safe, drinking water and improving the quality of water resources, and we do this quite well. However, recent events and unique factors in the state have created a need to evaluate water management options for the future. Water is our most important natural resource. Here in Connecticut, we often take it for granted. We use it for drinking, recreation, industry, agriculture, and much more. Water is a critical resource that we need to protect now and into the future. The increasing frequency of drought events over the last decade has raised awareness that rivers can go dry. Future climate trends in Northeast are uncertain and planning for adaptation is essential. There have been proposals for large-scale movement of water access the state that have raised concerns about other withdrawals of water. We've had multiple cases where registered diversions have caused streams to go dry in recent years. The new stream flow reg regulations downstream of water supply reservoirs are highlighting the ecological need for water, which must be balanced with other water needs and changes in waters are occurring with decreasing average demands and increasing peak day demands for lawn irrigation to some parts of the state. 
In response to these pressures, the legislature enacted Public Act 14163, which spells out 17 specific requirements for the plan and directs the council to develop a state water plan by 2018. The requirements focus on having a strong scientific basis for planning and good data on our water resources and how we use them, needs for the water for public health and safety, ecological and environmental needs, ensuring engagement stakeholders as well as general public in the development and implementation of the plan and ensuring that other water planning efforts in the states are incorporated, and finally, that there are requirements to consider specific aspects of water management, like infrastructure and conservation, to make recommendations to support or make changes to our water management framework within the state of Connecticut. At this point in the presentation, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to turn the program over to Lori Matthew from the Department of Public Health, who is going to give an overview for the state water plan. Good morning. Thank you, Jack. My name is Lori Matthew. I'm the Section Chief of the Drinking Water Section at the State of Connecticut Department of Public Health. I'm here to speak to you today about the planning process and the goals of, this, of the draft state water plan. The key highlights of the state water plan include uh, a platform for consistent informed decision making. One of the most important aspects of the plan is to maintain the highest quality water for drinking purposes. But while you do that, you also balance the in-stream needs and out-of-stream needs, and that's an important aspect of the plan as well. While we're doing all of this and providing water for all needs, we need to be wise stewards and wise users of water. And water conservation and creating a new water ethic is very important through the planning process and the future for the state of Connecticut. And of course, maintaining good scientific data and information is always going to be important. It is a foundational piece uh, of the state water plan. Over the past year, there were a number of workshops and public meetings that were held and the plan was produced uh, using a two-phase process. Uh, the initial workshops, held, there were three meetings held, one in Norwich, next in New Britain, and the other in Southbury. Many people were invited to attend and provided gr good comment to the process. The second phase included a series of workshops where we looked at options and opportunities and discussed with many of the stakeholders, including environmental groups, uh, public water systems, um, agriculture interests, and business groups, came together to, to speak to what are the policies, what are the existing uh, challenges and opportunities, and where do we need to head in the future, and what are the priorities to work on, what are the priority policies, what are the pathways forward and what needs to get done uh, over the, f the next 5 to 10, 20 years concerning water. Some of the workshops focused on policies and making recommendations and then putting it all together under the draft plan and producing recommendations. And again, in the second phase, three additional public meetings were held. What did we learn through the whole process? Well, the good news is Connecticut has ample high quality water for our needs, but that water is not always in the place that you need it and when we need it. So it is wise and we found that is wise and efficient use of water is going to be an important aspect always as we move forward. Climate change will continue to stress our natural systems and our management systems and extreme storm events need to be planned for. So now is the time to plan. Balancing all of our needs and all of our water needs is an important aspect of the plan and was discussed consistently among the agencies and the stakeholders that were involved in the numerous meetings that we held. The right quantity and quality for each need is an important aspect of the plan, including the triple bottom line, which is having sufficient water for human health, environmental health, as well as the economic costs and benefit. Overall goals of the plan, again, included balance, and that's a core piece. A balance for what? A balance for public health, water consumption, environmental needs, recreational use. Also, paying close attention to climate change and including science and good information and including the public and stakeholders was an important aspect of the plan, not only in the, during the last year, but moving forward in for implementation and working together amongst the four agencies that have oversight of, and regulatory oversight and planning oversight of water 
and working closely with stakeholders moving forward. What's in the draft plan? Well, it's broken up into background information, including current policies and future options and opportunities, great technical information, um, including water needs, water supply information, climate information on climate change and water conservation, and then a series of recommendations that includes policy recommendations and pathways forward, including implementation opportunities and challenges. Another important piece of the plan were the background white papers, and there's four of them that are available online on the Water Planning Council's webpage, which is www.ct.gov backslash water. The four white papers include current water management structure, land conservation and economic development, and future water management options and challenges. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague from the Department of Environmental Energy, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, Betsy Wingfield, to speak to you about data and technical analysis. Thank you, Lori. Hello, I'm Betsy Wingfield. I'm the Bureau Chief of the Water Protection and Land Reuse Bureau at the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And I represent that agency on the Water Planning Council. And I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk to you about some of the technical aspects of the state water plan. So one of the challenges with water planning is what scale do you plan at? A watershed, also known as a basin, is an area of land that drains all the rainfall falling on that land to a common outlet like Long Island Sound. A single stream joins another stream and forms a local basin or a watershed. Local basins come together to form a subregional basin. Subregional basins come together to form regional basins. And regional basins come together to form a major basin, like the Connecticut River Basin. In Connecticut, we have eight major river basins, 44 regional basins, and 337 subregional basins, and almost 3,000 local basins. We chose to plan at the regional basin scale. This is a map of the 44 regional basins that we have in Connecticut. Most of those basins encompass several or more towns or parts of a town. The Quinnipiac, which is circled in red, is an example of a regional basin. The key to making informed decisions about future water management is a sound technical understanding of the conditions of Connecticut's river basins. This includes the amount of water in each basin and the competing demands for this water. For this first plan, we chose a regional scale because of time and resource constraints, but our hope is that in the future we can dig a little bit deeper and go down to a local scale. The plan, the plan is a wealth of technical information. It's the first time that Connecticut has been able to pull all of the available data we have on water quantity and water quality into one place. In addition to showing the regional basins, this map also shows average annual stream flow in each regional basin. The darker the color, the higher the average annual stream flow, ranging from 22 inches a year to upwards of 50 inches a year. When you combine this map with a map of out-of-stream needs, you can begin to get a picture of which river basins may be at risk of not being able to satisfy all needs. The maps in the plan do not necessarily suggest that a basin is at a risk of overuse, but indicate on a relative basis which basins are using more of their available water than others and by how much. None of the maps stand by themselves themselves, but can be combined with other information for a more complete picture of each basin. This is a map of the eight major basins in Connecticut. Most people will be most familiar with the three largest basins, moving from west to east, the Housatonic Basin, the Connecticut River Basin, and the Thames River Basin. We illustrated water availability and water use pa um, patterns in each of the regional basins. This is a sample for the Quinnipiac Regional Basin in South Central Connecticut. The first section of the summary sheet includes identification information, a map, and an accounting of the water coming into the basin through precipitation, movement of water, and ultimately what's left in the stream. The basin summaries also include demands from permanent and registered diversions or withdrawals, including those that are on the books but not currently being used. The blue bar is the water in the basin, and the colored bars below the blue bar are water demands in the basin. In this particular regional basin, if all possible demands in the basin were needed at the same time, then demand would ex exceed available water, both during average conditions, which is the top set of graphs, and dry summertime conditions, which is the lower set of graphs. We also looked at climate change as part of the planning process. 
and evaluated near-term climate change impacts on potential ways in which the balance of water needs and water availability could be affected. The analysis evaluated the potential range of future climate trends for a number of parameters, including monthly precipitation, monthly temperatures, and monthly stream flow throughout the state. The blue bars above are based on history, and the red bars are based on model conditions in the year 2080. It is anticipated that annual temperatures, rainfall, and runoff will be higher in the future than they are today. Runoff is likely to be significantly higher in the winter months and perhaps lower in the summer months. These results suggest that future flood risk could increase and also serves as a warning of potentially drier summer conditions even though we may get more rain annually. This is an indication that again, we have enough water and we will have enough water, but it may not be where we need it, when we need it. The plan also evaluated options for further evaluating our water resources and potential tools that could be useful, such as a computer model known as SWAM. The Quinnipiac River was used as an example, and the model identifies the general hydrology of the basin, where water is being withdrawn, and the movement of water. The model can be used to evaluate how changes in how we use water or withdraw water uh, can impact that basin at the regional or local level. So now I would like to pass it over to Garrett Ucolito from the Office of Policy and Management to talk about policy priorities and pathways forward. Thank you, Betsy. My name is Garrett Ucolito, and I'm Undersecretary for Comprehensive Planning and Intergovernmental Policy at the state's Office of Policy and Management. I'm going to talk today about the top 10 uh, policy recommendations, as well as pathways forward on the most pressing issues. Throughout the planning process, stakeholders work to formulate policy recommendations aimed at guiding future legislative, regulatory, and planning decisions on water. Numerous issues were identified, and there were a number of recommendations to begin to address these issues that the stakeholders were able to reach consensus on. As we briefly go through the recommendations and issues identified, see what topics resonate with you and flag them to explore further in the plan. The recommendations can be found in Section 5 of the plan. The consensus recommendations included, water management should have a strong scientific basis and data to support the decisions. As possible, remove obsolete registered diversions. Encourage innovation in agricultural water practices that promote water reuse, improved and expanded storage, and potentially water quality trading. Access to water data should be centralized into a single portal that will serve as a repository and link for all water data. The stakeholders agreed that encouraging use of Class B, or waste receiving waters, for non-potable uses like power plants and irrigation, for example, would be a good idea. Water conservation education, particularly with respect to lawn irrigation, is an area ripe for improvement in Connecticut. We need to develop a way to review and coordinate the myriad of plans being developed across the state that affect water management, such as WOOCs and the Plan of Conservation and Development. Encourage regional water sharing solutions where they are practical and beneficial. The plan reaffirms support for the protection of Class 1 and Class 2 land contributing to water supply. We want to expand protections to other watershed lands and land that feeds aquifers used for public water supply or by private wells. Finally, we want to create a water education program aimed at the general public and municipal officials to expand the dialogue on water issues. The Water Planning Council will need to prioritize these recommendations and begin to identify the resources necessary to address them once the plan is finalized. A number of issues were identified during the one-year planning process that will take more time to fully address. Some aspects of the issue may be part of the consensus recommendations we just discussed, but other aspects will take additional effort to work out. Pathways forward are ideas on how these issues might be approached, possible partnerships, and options. As these issues mature, the Water Planning Council can shepherd them through to result in new policy recommendations. Again, water conservation is a huge issue in Connecticut, and there are numerous options for us to consider to expand the conservation ethic in the state. In some cases, regional solutions can solve local issues, and interconnections or consolidation of water services sometimes can help. 
we need to explore why and where connections can address issues and provide flexibility without undue impact to the resources or systems that rely on them. Registered water diversions are grandfathered withdrawals of water. There is evidence that some registered diversions are causing environmental impairments and we need to work cooperatively with diverters to find a way to manage these impacts and provide a better balance for both in-stream and out-of-stream uses. In order to maintain infrastructure in good working condition, maintenance and replacement must be planned and the components need to be able to handle or quickly recover from disruptive events. Maintenance of water infrastructure is costly and often deferred as limited funds are used elsewhere. Improvements in planning for and funding infrastructure maintenance needs to be addressed. We need to work to better evaluate the economic impacts and benefits of water management decisions and engage the business community in these discussions. Every issue and recommendation in this plan requires resources and funding for implementation. We need to get creative in our approaches and look for potential funding sources. The plan identifies methods to encourage the use of Class B waters for non-potable uses if environmentally prudent and cost-effective, and recommends the Water Planning Council develop guidelines on how to evaluate such use considering environmental, social, and economic metrics. Drought planning coordinates with a, a number of other recommendations in the plan. We have experienced drought several times over the last decade, and last year's drought in particular highlighted some of the issues that need to be addressed. These include encouragement of long-term water conservation activities, coordinated drought planning by utilities, and model ordinances for municipalities that support statewide drought planning. There are currently only a few projects in Connecticut that encompass both wastewater and water reuse. We want to focus some attention in this area and begin to explore the opportunities. The water use accounting pathway forward identifies methods for tracking water usage in the state in order to support ongoing planning efforts. The planning process highlighted the challenges associated with ensuring the balance between in-stream and out-of-stream water uses. The need to better define ecological flows and the impacts of required releases to support ecological flows on the water uses. We need a way to keep abreast of new developments in technology on many fronts, including things like water treatment, reuse, and desalinization. There are a number of other concerns regarding private residential wells that surfaced during the planning process and work on improvements to the data on private wells and water quality monitoring of those wells needs to be explored. So as you think about the state water plan, think about your number one concern for water in Connecticut is and let us know. Remember though, if you want your comments or concerns to be captured on the record, please submit your official comments electronically on the Water Planning Council website, www.ct.gov forward slash water. There is a lot of information and numerous recommendations in this draft plan. If you have thoughts and ideas on particular aspects or on how the plan as a whole, uh, we hope to hear from you. To provide feedback, go to www.ct.gov forward slash water, click on the link to submit comments into the online form or upload a document. Using this form will help us track, compile, and respond to the comments. So we encourage you to use this method to submit comments. Comments must be filed by Monday, November 20th, 2017. For, for more information on the water plan, please go to www.ct.gov forward slash water.